morning. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry Christmas.
The prophet declares that God will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you with God's love. God's salvation is here. Let us sing to the Lord and celebrate that God has done glorious things. We light the fourth candle, the candle of joy, and the Christ candle to celebrate the light God has sent into the world. Son 
Jesus, hear our prayers of thanks and praise. Unite us as one family in Christ to shine with the true light of your love for all the world. Amen. We begin with the hymn of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Sister.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for who, her who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her.
there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid or sleep. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Now after they had left in 
the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. He just simply says he was born. 
And that simple sentence is probably the biggest understatement in the Bible. For with this ordinary birth, God came into our world to be like us in order that we would learn to be like him. That's the enormity of this simplest thing. And though we don't get a lot of details about the baby, we are told everything about how his birth transformed those around him. And from that manger, we come to know right off the bat one of the truths of our faith. And that is that God's transforming love is known in the world through the witness of those who believe in him. So in the nativity story, while we don't hear a lot about the baby, we do hear about what happened to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Mary, the young, naive mother, became wise, seated at the cradle of her baby. Looking at that infant, I imagine Mary pondering what it meant for God to love us so much that he would make good on his promise with this child. And with that wisdom, Mary's life was illumined by the light of the manger. Initially, the shepherds were terrified at the angel announcement on the hillside. They weren't expecting an angel visitation, much less an invitation to be the first guest of the Savior of the world. But after they spent a little time near the manger, beholding the light of this little countenance, they too were transformed. And they returned to Bethlehem, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen they too became reflections of the light that had come into their lives. And on this holiest of days, we too, like the shepherds and Mary, may be struck by the enormity of this simple act of God. For we too are given the same gift as the shepherds, to recognize what this birth can mean in our lives. And we too can contemplate the difference that our lives can make in illuminating There once was a Christmas pageant at a small church in which the part of the innkeeper at Bethlehem was played by a high school student. He was quiet and polite, the kind of boy for whom the word awkward was an apt description. He was awkward in manner, he was awkward socially, he was even awkward in size. His peers liked him well enough, but he was the sort of person sort of easy to overlook. And so, as the pageant played out, Joseph and Mary appeared at the inn, and it became the innkeeper's moment to shine. And so he stood, awkwardly, in the doorway, slumping a bit toward the couple as they made their request for lodging. And at the appropriate time, he then recited his one line, I'm sorry, but there is no room in the inn. But as Mary and Joseph turned and walked wearily away toward the cattle stall where they <coughs> would spend the night, the boy continued to watch them with his eyes now filled with compassion. And suddenly responding to a grace which was not part of the script, but nevertheless filled his heart at that moment, he startled himself, the holy couple, and the entire audience by calling out, wait a minute, don't The simple pageant, like Luke's gospel itself, shows what happens to ordinary people living in a dark world when suddenly, in ways they do not fully understand, the light of Christ shines upon them. They begin then to reflect that light in their own lives. And the consequences of this simple birth of this baby become enormous. I heard a similar story of Christmas transformation on NPR's StoryCorps this week. It was Christmas Eve, 1967. William Lynn Weaver, 18 at the time, was walking in his neighborhood in Mechanicsville, Tennessee, when he saw a boy gliding down the road on a shiny bicycle. Boy, that, that looks like my brother's bike, he thought. And when he got home, he asked his younger brother, Wayne, where his bicycle was. And he said, it's down on the steps. So they looked. It wasn't there. The Weaver brothers tracked down where the boy on their stolen bike lived. 
and with an unlit shack in an alley. And so as they planned how to retrieve the bike using playground tactics, their father came up. And when he heard what happened, he told the boys to follow him. When Mr. Weaver and his sons arrived at the alley shack, an elderly man with a cane answered the knock on the door. The home appeared cold and dark and had a single candle for light. His grandson, Weaver learned, was the boy who had stolen the bike. He was the same age as my brother, about 10 years old, Weaver remembered. That little boy started crying. And he said, I just wanted something for Christmas. The Weavers took their bike and they walked home. Then Weaver describes what happened when they got back to the house. My father tells my mother what happened and she doesn't say anything. She just starts cutting the turkey in half and dividing all the fixings. She started packing it all up. My father went to the coal yard and got a big bag of coal. And then, when he came back, he asked my brother, you've got another bike, don't you? My brother said, yeah. And then the father and his two sons returned to the shack in the alley, this time with food and some coal to provide heat and the bike. <coughs> William Weaver describes what happened next. The little boy was just crying. But the thing that moved me the most was the old man. My father gave him $20, which was a huge deal back then. And my father said, Merry Christmas. And the man said, thank you, and broke down in tears. Weaver went on to say, my father was a driver, my mother was a domestic, so we didn't have a lot of stuff. And that Christmas, I don't even remember what gift I got, but I do know that it was the best Christmas that I have ever had. Christmas love and hope and charity transforms even the simplest acts of kindness into enormous gifts that last a lifetime. May the light that shines from the manger be born in you this Christmas. Amen. <coughs> Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks this day for the opportunity to be together in this place, for the excitement of celebrating the miracle of the birth of Jesus once more, for the hope, peace, love, and joy that you so freely bring to our lives. Loving God, we can't quite imagine what it must have been like for Mary she heard your request and then she responded with an unconditional yes. With your grace, slow us down, wondrous creator. And as we celebrate this birth, cause us to take time to really consider what Mary's answer means to us today and the ways that Christ has and will continue to touch our lives. As we come to you today, we bring our concerns to those things that rest heavy on our hearts, or our families, friends, and world. Remind us that your presence is with us all the time, and that your healing love comforts and restores us. Take away our fears and our worries, and open our hearts and our ears to the cries of those in need. Give us courage and energy and enthusiasm as we work for you in our world. Lord, remind us that, like Mary, each one of us can be a bearer of your good news. You teach us that we are called to proclaim your hope and peace and joy and love to others. Make it our deepest desire to carry out your will. We ask that you be with all of those who are in harm's way this day, all of those who's, who live lives of anguish, poverty, and oppression. And we pray today for Laura Lanson, that she might find health. And for Shirley Robinson, as she receives this prayer book today, be with her in her healing. We pray that your light of the world would penetrate the darkness of alienation 
and bring hope and peace to all your people. May the light of the stars which sparkled in those dark skies again illuminate our lives, guiding, healing, and leading us to you. Blessed God, as we hear the story of Christ's birth, remind us again that you are born continually in our lives. For it is with gratitude that we offer our praise and our thanksgiving to you. This day we look toward the future with hope, knowing that life is full of possibilities because of the birth of the Christ child. As we look outside of ourselves today, may we see hope for the world and hope for our nation. We pray these things in the name of the child who comes and who grows in stature and teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father.
Let us stand together, join in the office of prayer. In the quiet of the night, we have heard God's truth. In the quiet of this night, we receive the gift of the new birth in our lives and in our world. In the quiet of the night, we have received God's peace. In the quiet of this night, we are called to be to the world. In the quiet of the night, the angels sang a lullaby to the holy infant, tender and mild. In the quiet of this night, light our candles as a sign of Christmas, hope and peace, and sing together silent night. 